How are you? I don't see you over there. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Good to see you. Hi, Deb. How you doing? Good. Good morning, everybody. The clock has struck 1030. <laughs> That's starting time, isn't it? The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Good morning. We'll try starting out with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, welcome to First Baptist. Uh, it's Sunday morning. I'm happy to be here. I always like seeing the faces and talking to the people. I hope everybody is well. So far, I haven't had any ill reports. It sounds like everybody's doing well. Loretta is doing well. I'm missing Tim. Where is he? Oh, okay. <laughs> He's well, though, huh? Okay. I should have I known that actually before I asked. Sorry about that. Okay. You're welcome. Here, everybody knows that. Uh, I guess we're going to have a video. You have to give me as I get back used to this service. Wow, impressive. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> nice video. Well, I really uh, would like to say thank you to Dr. Brock for offering, I mean, for asking me to come and spend some time with you today. I uh, cannot believe it's been a year uh, since her husband Dennis passed, but uh, I hope she's doing well today, and I thank her. She's, uh, she and I have become pretty close friends. Uh, I've seen her and talked to her a few times, but she is hard to keep up with. <laughs> I see her down at Steeler Games. I see her at the Pirate Games. <laughs> I see her all over the place down in Pittsburgh. So I guess she's made herself home here in, in Pennsylvania, and I'm glad to hear that. So hope you're doing well, Dr. Brock. I know you're watching. God bless you. Okay, we have announcements for it this morning. Uh, Sunday, October 30th, 2022, you're having your quarterly business meeting. I guess everybody knows that. World Mission Offering during the month of October. Friends and Family Day on November 13th, 2022. And there'll be a potluck following the worship service. I have here a note on the Allegheny Valley Association of Churches. Uh, it says here they're doing box stuffing, at home giving, and just help one. Does anybody know anything about those programs? I don't. So is that just something that, is that connected with a church somehow? Oh, okay. Very good. Oh, food bank. Thank you. That's a good idea. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, musical selection. One of my favorite songs in all the world. How great is our God. Uh, we're going to play a video of that, I guess. all 
the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. That song, my goodness. God is a great God, is he not? I know that because I've already heard stories today since I've been here about how God has been good to many of you. And uh, people have asked me about Loretta. I will tell you those who didn't get a chance to ask that she is doing well. She had a rough time there for a while, but thanks to the Lord God Almighty, she just turned around and now she's almost back to normal. So. Thank you for your prayers, because I know that you have prayed for her and for me. So thank you very much, and God bless you. How great is our God. I'm loving it. Responsive reading, sanctification, number 673. Looks like Susan. Susan's coming up okay. Sharon, not Susan, Sharon. <laughs> the other Susan. Please join with me in reading number 673, Sanctification. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. Just as you used to be 
just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. Slave is you are free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. Now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. Live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, but the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They conflict with each other, so they do not want to be led. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, Bits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, these things that I say do not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Cher. Uh, the offering has already been taken, correct? Anyone that wants to give it has given it. Oh. Hi, Chris.
if you will, uh, other ground. That brings us to joys and concerns. And I know there are many joys out there right now. Uh, I hope there aren't too many concerns, but yes, Lynn. Okay. Hey, happy birthday, Lynn. <laughs> That's a joy. Today is my daughter's birthday also, Tracy. So. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, Dawn. Wow, you're kidding me. Whoa, time flies, my goodness. Four years? What time flies? Thank you. I'm going to combine it with a joy and a concern. Rich's brother broke his leg way back last month. Uh -huh. um, he ended up with having blood clots and a pulmonary embolism. The Lord answered those prayers. Earlier Friday evening, Rich's sister in law texted everybody saying he was going back to the hospital for an infection so they were thinking the infection was in the bloodstream here thank god i put on facebook asking for my prayer warriors for prayers they were answered the prayer the infection was just skin infection it wasn't in oh, the bloodstream wow. so he should be coming home today or tomorrow yeah. but continued prayers for them because he's just had a rough go of it for the last month amen thank you for that will miss peggy All Jess's tests came out all right. Fantastic. Uh, I, I was so worried. <laughs> and he's, he's very thin. He was in a 38, now he's in a 32. <laughs> but he doesn't look like he did when he was 40. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Miss Peggy. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Yes, wrong. Uh, we've been praying for my uh, great nephew, uh, who's born autistic, four years old, and hadn't spoke. Uh, but they got him enrolled in uh, in his school uh, about three weeks ago. Now he's speaking. Oh. He's doing very well. Oh, good. And uh, have a little joke uh, <laughs> about a of course a New York cab driver <laughs> and a big name preacher died at the same time. And they got to heaven, and St. Peter gave the cab driver a beautiful silk robe and a golden staff. And then when the preacher come along, he just gave him a plain robe and just a wooden staff, and he complained. He says, that guy, just a cab driver in New York. He says, I, I pastor one of the biggest churches in New York. St. Peter said, we go by results up here. He says, when Joe drove that cab in New York, everybody prayed. When you preached, a lot of people slept. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, I have a concern. I, I've been told, I haven't seen him, but I heard Mark is not doing well. Uh, he said he was going to be here at church today, but he couldn't come because I guess he's having some problems. Uh, many of you probably know about that, but uh, keep Mark in your prayers because he's not doing that well. Thank you. So, anybody else? Okay, so now we get down to the scripture. If you have your Bibles, and if my iPad works, our scripture for today is taken from the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 16. The Gospel of John, chapter 16. I'll be reading verses 7 through, I believe, 16. So if you found it, say amen, and I will get started with that. Amen? Do you guys stand for scripture or no? No? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be reading from the King James Version, New King James Version. Oh, no, I have King James Version. How'd that happen? Okay. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. 
is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore I said, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while, and you shall not see me. And again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to my Father. Thank you. Then you may be seated. Thank God for his word and for the people that read his word and try to understand his word. The title message for today that I have is The Great Advantage. The Great Advantage. You all know that you have an advantage, correct? We have many advantages in our life. Some of us were born with silver spoons in our mouth. Some of us were born with talent to sing. Some of us are born with silver tongues. Many of us have advantages. But there is one and one only great advantage. And since Christ's followers are not of the world system, they can expect to experience enmity from time to time. As Jesus pointed out in the opening verses of John 16, the more authentic our walk, the more likely we are to face some sort of persecution. In our text today, the Savior reiterates to his followers that he is going away, but tells them that his leaving will be good for them. How incredible his words must have sounded to them. Judas had just slipped out into the night. The Lord had predicted Peter's denial. Outside, the world is plotting his death. And Jesus knows that sorrow has filled the disciples' hearts. And there's a growing panic among them. And I know we all can appreciate how panicked we would be if we were there and Jesus said, I am going away. But now he says, it is for your good that I am going away. The advantage was, of course, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Another counselor, just like Jesus. The Spirit would be alongside and in the disciples, encouraging them, exhorting them, and bringing them into an elevated spiritual life. And unlike Jesus, he would not be limited to a physical body, but he would be everywhere, all at once, always available. That church is a great advantage. That church is a huge advantage. But there is more. <laughs> Unbelievably, there's more. The advantage also includes the comfort that comes with the understanding that the Holy Spirit brings. And it's described in our text today. He will counteract 
the world or counterattack the world. That's a little different, sorry. To those who love Christ, First Baptist, it's a great encouragement. This passage that I just read is the most extended statement of the Spirit's work of illumination and regeneration in all of Scripture. It's a source of encouragement. It was to the disciples, and it should be to us. Speaking of us, we weren't there, right? We didn't get the privilege of doing that. But Jesus still said, the Holy Spirit will come to us. I know you have friends and colleagues and Christians who really don't believe that. And if they do believe it, they don't often take advantage of it. But there's a power there that many of us have that we have to recognize. The Holy Spirit's ministry is to bring the world's consciousness or to give us the consciousness of three things. The first thing is a correct perception of sin. Secondly, a correct perception of righteousness. And thirdly, a correct perception of judgment. In verse 9, in regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In verse 10, in regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in verse 11, in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. That old saying, what you don't know won't hurt you, does not apply here. What you don't know will get you if you're not careful. Our ignorance of sin and righteousness and judgment will ultimately bring us eternal hurt and disaster. But thanks to Jesus Christ, who went to the cross, the Holy Spirit is our divine remedy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Whoa, you got to really come along. <laughs> that was almost everybody. I love it. <laughs> our ignorance of sin, righteousness, and judgment will ultimately hurt us. And you agree with that, I'm sure. In verse 8, that word convict means to cross-examine with the purpose of convincing or refuting an opponent. The Spirit convicts the world. Yes, he does. He brings the guilt of sin home to the human consciousness so that men and women will seek relief through what? Through the mercy of God. The Holy Spirit comes to the world through us, First Baptist, us. Grab a hold of that, if you will. He's a sovereign God, just like the other two members of the Trinity. He can do anything he wants. But his normal method of bringing conviction to the world is through believers, people who believe the story that Jesus has told people who believe that they're indwelt with this power called the Holy Spirit. And it all began where? With Peter and the disciples on the day of Pentecost. You know the story, what the Spirit did for them. They spoke to each other, to all people around them in their own tongue. And yeah, people nowadays jibber-jabber, but if they spoke in Spanish, they spoke to them in English, they spoke to them in Italian. They spoke in their own tongues. What a revelation. And what a breathtaking idea that God would use us to do his good work. I bet you don't think about that too often, do you? 
I know I don't. But when I pick up that book called The Scriptures, it reminds me all the time. It is a great advantage, a huge advantage. For us to be used in this way is not so much a matter of what we say and how we talk, but it's a matter of who we are. Who are we as Christians? Our lives are open letters, known and ready to be read by the people around us. When we're able to live our lives utilizing this great advantage that we have called the Holy Spirit, we too can convict men of sin that is theirs. We can convict them of righteousness that may be theirs. And we can convict them of judgment that they cannot avoid. Did you ever find yourself talking to some unbeliever and their light uh, in their eyes, they're listening to you, but you could tell that they find it amazing what you're saying? Well, uh, maybe you don't have that experience, but I do. We should all do that. The message is that the astounding reality of what I'm saying was divulged by Christ on the eve of his departure. And he intended it to bring comfort to the disciples. Not fear and trembling, but comfort to their troubled hearts. By virtue of the Holy Spirit, Jesus' convicting power would be theirs. And guess what? It also is ours. We have the great advantage of convicting power. It dwells us every day. Every day. I'm going to close with verse 13 through 15 of my text. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. We will grow as he further illuminates the scriptures to us. That doesn't mean that we will have all knowledge regarding the sciences or the mathematics or whatever field you might think. But it does mean that we will be taken deeper and deeper and to the essential truth about God and Christ and eternal life and our souls. That expression, all truth, indicates increasing liberation. Because what does the truth do for Christians? It makes us free. John chapter 8, verse 36. we will increasingly be given the mind of Christ as the Spirit takes what is Christ and discloses it to us. The great advantage. I'm so happy to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me and dwelling in you. I just wish we all would learn how to take that power and convict the world of sin. We have it within our power to do that. But unfortunately, being born again is just the beginning. You have to take what God has given you. Go to Bible study, go to Sunday school, go to the church service and dig deeper and deeper and deeper into the word of God. Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me to come, come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come. I come.
thank you for your attention. Thank you for the opportunity for being here. I love you all. I love this church. And I hope that that spirit just grabs hold of you and lets you understand how you can impact and affect people in this world. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you for your attention. The invitation to Christian discipleship. From what I can glean, everybody that I see out there is a member of this church, I think. So do you do this every Sunday? Will you play something doing that? I, we don't do that? Okay, I'm learning. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been back. I do not recognize the gentleman sitting behind Chris there. I don't know if I've seen him before. Can I ask you your name, sir? Bulletin, okay. Oh, okay. Very good. Thank you. I know everybody, every other face I see here, so we can move on. Down to a musical selection. Who You Say I Am with a video. Thanks for your attention. slave to sin. Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free. Who is free indeed. I'm a child. There's a place for 
thank you, First Baptist, for the opportunity of being here. Thank Dr. Brock. I hope she's enjoying herself where she is. And that I hope that all of you will have a wonderful and blessed day. If you would stand for the benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory. To the all-wise God be honor, glory, dominion, and power. And we thank you, God, for that great advantage. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace. Turn this thing off. I'm telling them to turn it off.